separation from God in hell. And that blood is applied through repentance and faith. And our memory verse that night.
attendance. And with their certificates, I'm going to give them this bag that we've worked hard on because in the bags, it's memory work for each day. So they can go home and they can work on it and they can take each one out and it has the verse here and they can take it and put the verses together. And they can show you how they did this and the story behind it. And then they got to get back in the room and talk to you about the program. So first, we have Amy Joy. Well, Amy Joy.
blessed the last night when God and the Israelites came to that uh, Red Sea. And it was the Red Sea. It was the giant body of water. Uh, it would have taken a very lengthy amount of time to build up rafts to get the billions of Israelites across that Red Sea. And that was a problem because the Egyptian army was hot on their heels. But God provided for them because he was able to part the Red Sea and Israel crossed over on dry ground. Uh, even though the Egyptians were swallowed up in the water when they tried to reach through Africa. There is no situation uh, that would come to in this life uh, that God does not have the power and the ability to address. The lesson tonight was on the fact that God uh, provides for us, that God uh, cares for us, and He does. And that's evidently to see. The memory verse tonight, well, not the memory verse, but one of the key verses for tonight, rather, was that verse in 1 Peter uh, 5 and 7, uh, which says that we are to humble ourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, uh, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon him, for he cares uh, for you. Uh, I love that verse. And really, that verse is not only the theme of what we're talking about tonight, but it's been a theme throughout the entirety of the week. Uh, God cares for for you. Uh, the Bible, Peter said to cast all your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. One of the parts of the Exodus story is when it says that God heard the cries and he heard the prayers of the Israelites uh, for uh, their desire to lead the Egyptian bondage. He heard that. And he answered it. They had prayed to God for deliverance. It didn't come immediately, but eventually it did come. In God's timing, God called Moses there to burn the bush and he sent him. But that theme has been part of the whole week. God cares for It can never be overstated how important it is for you to always remember that God loves you and that God cares for you. That, that's fundamental. God loves you. How do you know that God loves you? Well, that's evident in many ways. Uh, Romans 5 and 8, one of the many verses for this week, says that God demonstrated his love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, John said in 1 John that he said, Here it is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. That he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, that is, the sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You can rest assured today that God loves you, and you can know that beyond the shadow of a doubt, because God sent his son to die for you on the cross of Calvary. Uh, that was your single greatest need. There is no need that you have that is greater than the need for a Savior. Uh, the fact of the matter is, we're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. Our single greatest need was for a redeemer. And God met that need. He met that need by allowing his son, the Lamb of God, uh, to die upon the cross of Calvary for your sins. And the amazing thing about that in salvation is that that is a, not only a precious promise that we carry with us, once you're saved, you're always going to have that salvation. But that also should be a reminder to us that if God can provide for us and take care of our greatest need, then there's no other need that you can't do. <laughs> if God can take care of your single greatest need, then every need you come to in life, God can take care of. He can provide for it. The Bible says, cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. God loves you, and God cares for you. He does. I know sometimes this world may be rough and hard, but never forget that God loves you. Now, we're never promised easy times, but God will always be with us throughout all the difficult times. Uh, when Israel came to the Red Sea, boy, that seemed like an impossible task. How in the world are they going to get across? Well, God was with them, and God had told them he was going to lead them in the camp. They should have trusted in God's promise. Yo, he can leave the cross. And he did. Uh, God was with Israel throughout all the hardships, all those long days in the desert wandering around for 40 years. God never left them. And God provided for them. Even in their stubborn disobedience, God still gave them man to eat quail. He uh, gave them water from a rock. Uh, and so we know that God provided and God cares for us. God provides for us and God cares for us. Uh, I hope we today truly understand and realize how much that God loves us and how much that he provides for us. Uh, we need to keep that in mind and cherish it. I hope today that if you've never accepted Christ, if you've never experienced the love of God, that you realize that he does love you. And he is calling you to repentance and to believe and to trust in 
in him. There is salvation, no other name, there's no other means of salvation but in Christ. God loves you enough, he sent his son to die for you, and he sent his son to provide salvation, but that salvation must be received. That only comes by repenting of sin and placing faith in Christ. And if you are a child of God, look to your salvation to find your joy, to find your happiness. You know, as you in the the song that that Kimber sang, you know, one of the well, the entire song, but the way the one part of that chorus that always stands out to me is the part where it says that in, in you I have my worth, in you I have my identity. Uh, that's who we are as a child of God. And that's what we to. You know, you may have done else in this life, but if you're a child of God, you're God's child. Uh, and that's where your worth comes from. The world very God of God, but you're a child of God, you're a child of God. Rejoice and be happy. So remember and rejoice in God's love, in God's care, and in God's provision. Uh, for us. Again, it has been a, a wonderful blessing to have everybody here throughout this week. Uh, there are finger foods and refreshments prepared out in the fellowship hall. Everybody stay and eat as you're able to. But also take some time to go look around the classroom and make your kids show you what they did this week. And it's been a busy week. They worked on crafts and they you know, tried a lot of stuff that they got done uh, this week. They may sing a song or two as they learn this week, and whatever you want to do. But uh, enjoy what they've learned this week. We've enjoyed having them. And do remember that after you leave here tonight, there is no Bible school tomorrow because tomorrow is Saturday. We're all going to go home and recuperate and rest. But Sunday is Sunday. That means the first day of the week, that means it is time to come to church and to learn about God. That's the day we all should be in the house of the Lord, uh, learning of God, worshiping and praising Him. I hope if you don't have a church family that you're a part of, that you'll be here with us Sunday morning Amen. for services. Is there anything other announcements or anything we need to make before we dismiss? That can be my real quick. <laughs> The little kids, the six and down, their classroom back there, they have folders for each one who is in my class. So make sure to get their folders. That's got their crafts. It's got the things that they've learned. And so make sure to get their folders when you go back there. And they can put their little certificate inside their folder, too, so that it stays nice. And Well, real quick, like uh, I'm, we're we're going to have dismissal prayer, and while we have dismissal prayer, we're going to have some blessing on the food, and then y'all can disperse and go look through all the things that have been. Fellowship falls that way. Yeah, fellowship Hall is right over yonder. That was very nondescript. That means you walk out the door, you fall inside, walk over that way. It's saying right over yonder is not very descriptive, helpful in the way. All right. Uh, Tim, will you dismiss us in prayer and ask a blessing on the please? Father in heaven, God, just uh, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for each one of us uh, here tonight. Thank you for these uh, kids that have come to participate in Bible school. We do pray that uh, if there be one among us that does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that they ask him to forgive them of the sins and save their soul. Father, we pray your blessing upon the food, our time of fellowship together. Just pray that the food would bring nourishment to our bodies, that we use our bodies to be faithful in your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.